A BB forward in straight black pride, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, DC Radical One, with another radical report. And today we're going to talk about the tragic and disturbing and disgusting and frustrating and infuriating case of the demise of young Sade Robinson at the hands of the human filth known as Maxwell Anderson. And for those who aren't familiar with this case, uh, our young sister Sade Robinson was 19 years old and she um, went out on a date with a 33 year old man and that was the last thing that she did she married, made a very grave mistake and paid for it with her life so to get into this case we're going to go through a few articles and we're going to play a video and um you know we'll we'll you know we'll discuss it in between so we're going to start with this article it says a uh, harrowing trail of evidence led to an arrest in the case of missing college student and we have a picture here of our young um beautiful sister Charlotte robinson 19 years old who was studying for an associate's degree at milwaukee area technical college and hoped to pursue ironically a career in criminal justice after she graduated it says when 19 year old Charlotte robinson didn't show up for a shift at a wisconsin pizza restaurant on april 2nd her co-workers immediately suspected something was wrong. The evening before Robinson had planned a first date with Maxwell Anderson, 33, at a local seafood restaurant, according to a criminal complaint against Anderson. He is now facing charges of homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and arson in connection with Robinson's death. Now let's stop right here. I haven't heard anybody else say this, but why in the world is a 19 year old black really girl um dating a 33 year old man or agreeing to date him or agreeing to meet him anywhere this is something that you know i i don't know what women are teaching their daughters but to when I see pictures of her, I've seen pictures of uh, Sade, and I saw some pictures when um, from when she was in school, and she looked so young. She said she looked, she still looked like a child. And I'm, you know, those pictures probably taken two years before. What? Let's just be honest. This guy, there's probably more to his background. For a man to be 33 and to agree to take out somebody that looked as young as she looked. He was a predator from the beginning. But anyway, let me get back uh, to the article. It says uh, the young college student had been looking forward to the date, even telling a co-worker in her building how excited she was. The complaint said she texted Anderson. She was filling seafood and headed out to meet him at a seafood restaurant where he used to work wearing ripped jeans and a white shirt according to the complaint robinson was a vibrant extroverted presence at the pizza shuttle manager justin romano described her to cnn affiliate wdjt tv as very outgoing she would talk to everybody here she was always there to lighten the mood not showing up for work the next day wasn't like her at all, Romano, the manager on duty at the pizza shuttle the day Robinson disappeared, told WDJT TV. We kind of knew something was up. We had been calling her all day. 
one of Robinson's friends called the police that night, saying that she had not returned her calls or shown up for work, the criminal complaint said. Police visited Robinson's apartment for a well ch welfare check, but, not, but did not find her there. So apparently the young sister had her own place, um, which means that she had her own place, she had her own job, she had her own car, uh, she was take care of, taking care of herself and she felt, you know, what do young people tell you? They started telling you I'm grown. She felt grown. She felt like she could take care of herself, but it's obvious that she did not, because of her outgoing personality, she did not um, understand the dangers that exist out here. And that's not, that's not her fault. Uh, that the society it is the way it is but that is something that's part of preparing your children for life and letting them know how dangerous it is out here but anyway let me um get back to this it says the restaurant closed for three days during the search for robinson and authorities discovered a grisly set of clues the morning after her date with anderson robinson's vehicle was discovered on fire the 2020 Civic has sustained extreme fire damage, completely damaging the interior, according to the criminal complaint. Despite the fire damage, authorities were able to identify the outfit Robinson had been wearing the night of the date, as well as part of an iPhone consistent with her phone in the burnt car. Later that day, police were called to the scene of another gruesome discovery, a human leg on the beach in Warner Mount Park in the Milwaukee suburb of Cudahy, which appeared sawn off, sawn off at the hip, according to the criminal complaint. An examination determined the leg belonged to a black woman, approximately five feet tall. It was identified as Robinson's using preliminary DNA evidence, the complaint states. And on April 6th, as police canvassed the area where Robinson's car had been found, they identified more remains, including a human foot and what appeared to be human flesh, all appeared to come from the same person, the complaint said. Phone records found by a friend of Robinson's and her mother using a location sharing app were detailed in the complaint. They show Robinson's phone traveling the night of April 1st from the seafood restaurant to a nearby sports bar then to Anderson's home, and then to the park where the remains were discovered. Now, here's a picture of this uh, human excrement. And I'm just beyond the sisters. I don't know what y'all seeing somebody look like this. He, he looks crazy. And I'm just going to... Um, whenever you see a European male with some big tattoos or a bunch of tattoos... A lot of times those people are white supremacists and you can see he has a tattoo on his arm look like he had a tattoo on his chest but look right below his neck these people will um engage in activities with uh non-european women to do sadistic sadistic things to them and this appears to be the case here now uh i can't be sure but this gentleman looks to be at least a good six feet tall based upon the um picture and the gentleman behind him who was in law enforcement and they said that this this little girl was basically only five feet tall so she had no way to defend herself from this type of um savage demonic beast now says suspect faces homicide and mutil mutilation charges on friday wisconsin authorities charged anderson with first degree intentional homicide mutilating a corpse and arson of property other than a building he would face life in prison if convicted on the homicide charge the complaint details evidence police says ties anderson to the crimes including surveillance video witness accounts and phone records authorities also found blood in robinson's house and several gasoline containers it states the complaint says evidence led authorities to conclude robinson 
was deceased. The facts mentioned in this complaint cause complainant to conclude that the defendant intentionally uh, deceased and then dismembered Robinson with the intent to conceal the homicide. And it occurred between the arrival of the defendant's residence and his departure from the Warnermark Park area. Anthony Cotton, the attorney representing Anderson, told CNN his client is presumed innocent and we will fight this matter vigorously in court. At a Friday news conference, police said the search for more of Robinson's remains and other evidence continues. When asked if her office was reviewing other cases of missing women for possible connections, Milwaukee County Sheriff Danita Ball said, so far there hasn't been any evidence that there are other victims. After Anderson's first court appearance, Robinson's mother, Sheena Scarborough, called his called his arrest justice for a shy day. A verified GoFundMe for Robinson's memorial service described Robinson as a loving daughter, a cherished sister, and a dear friend to many. Robinson, originally from Mississippi, was about to graduate from Milwaukee Area Technical College and pursue a career in criminal justice according to the fundraiser. The pain of losing Sade has left a void in the hearts of her family, especially her grieving mother and little sister, along with other relatives, friends, and the entire community who loved and supported her. It reads the description. As we come together to honor Sade's memory, we aim to provide her with a dignified farewell that she deserves. Um, I mean, this is so heartbreaking. And it's so heinous. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, watch a clip of the search for Sade. And then we're going to come back and read uh, an article that deals with uh, the time, the timeline of this case. The new search for remains and the killing of a 19 year old Milwaukee woman. Prosecutors have charged Maxwell Anderson with homicide, mutilation and arson in the death of 19 year old Shade Robinson. She was last seen on a date with Anderson April 1st. On April 2nd, someone found a severed leg in Cudahy's Warnemont Park. Prosecutors say DNA evidence shows that it is Robinson's remains found in other areas have not yet officially been linked to Robinson. As 12 News is Emily Polfall reports Robinson's family and friends are looking for more volunteers in the search. Now we want to try to look up the bluff and down on the ground. Y'all know what y'all looking for? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to warn you. Grit and determination through grief. Another day of searching for Sade Robinson's remains and searching for closure for her family. I think everybody's just overwhelmed. Tracking through water and mud, Robinson's cousin sits in Warnemont Park after searching all day, too exhausted to go on camera. It's just tiring because we, we're not getting anywhere. But the, our family needs peace and we need closure, so I, I don't, I don't want to stop. A group of about 20, they're searching places mentioned in the criminal complaint of Robinson's suspected killer, Maxwell Anderson. Accused of scattering her body parts across Milwaukee County. The search party spent most of Saturday looking here in Warnemont Park. People we spoke to say they came out to help search to try to bring peace to Robinson's family. It was really hard terrain and you kind of be, have to be a madman to do it well. This is Robinson's friend, Josh. Like, I felt compelled to do that. I owed that to her. The pair met at Pizza Shuttle, where Robinson worked. She was gorgeous, and her smile could, like, brighten anyone's day, and she just had that personality where she could cheer you up. The group is still learning how to organize a widespread search party, and they're doing it with little help. I've never been part of a search or anything like this before. People want to get on the water because, obviously, he she might be in the water and we don't have the resources. In Warnemont Park, Emily Pofall, WISN 12 News. Now, uh, you know, I can only imagine how heartbreaking that is for her friends and family and just how senseless it is. So what I wanted to do is look at this article with a timeline and we see this picture of Sade with, um, I don't know if that's a friend or co-worker, 
And let me just say this. A lot of people are going to disagree with this, but we have to stop letting our children be so comfortable with one people they don't know, but also just going out in the world. And, you know, I know young people are part of this new integrated society or whatever. And this love is love stuff and everybody's the same, but everybody's not the same. Some people are psychopaths and even more they're even more than that and some people uh are psychotically uh racist psychotically white supremacist and if you don't teach our children their history and their culture and the history of, of the threat that we're under especially here in america um this is the type of outcome that takes place so Let's just take a look at this uh, timeline. This for this art from this article it says uh, we're working to learn more information about the disappearance of Shade Robinson and a possible connection to human remains that have been found across our region over the last ten days. Since Robinson went missing, a family family's been asking for donations for search efforts. But Wednesday night, the GoFundMe said the money will now be used for memorial expenses. So far, law enforcement has, uh, at this time of this article, had not confirmed the death of Miss Robinson or connected her to the body parts. So here's a timeline since this all started. Monday, April 1st, 19-year-old Sade Robinson went missing. Tuesday, April 2nd, Robin, uh, family said Robinson's car was found torched near the intersection of 30th and Lisbon on Milwaukee's north side. That same day, a severed leg was found in Warnermont Park in Cudahy, 11 miles from Robinson's burned car. Uh, Thursday, April 4th, TMJ Four Crews found a Milwaukee County Sheriff's Department searching a home on Oklahoma and 39th Street. That day, 33-year-old Maxwell Robinson was taken into custody and identified as a person of interest in relation to the severed leg found in Cudahy. It's important to note TMJ4 has chosen to identify Anderson because of the nature of the allegations he has not been charged at that point. Friday, April 5th, Sheriff's Department found more body parts near 30th and Lisbon, the same location where Robinson's car was set on fire. Saturday, April 6th, Robinson's family searched the area of 30th and Lisbon and found Robinson's blanket. Milwaukee police came out to search the area again and found more human remains. Sunday, April 7th, Robinson's family comes back to search the same area, area they did on April 6th and find human remains again. Now, let's stop right here. We're, as I'm reading this, how much can you desecrate one person's body that the police and her family are coming out and finding uh, pieces of this girl like what in what goes through the mind of us of a sick predatory monster to do this to someone that you just met Who's done nothing to you? I just... Anyway, let me let me carry on. Anderson went before Milwaukee uh, Tuesday, April 9th. Anderson went before a Milwaukee County judge, where prosecutors asked for an extension to keep him behind bars. That that extension was granted. That same night, friends and family of Robinson went back to Watermark Park and Cudahy to search the area. Family said they found what they believed to be body parts, but the sheriff's office office needed to investigate further. Thursday, April 11th, it's now been 11 days since Robinson went missing. The sheriff's office is leading the investigation and hasn't returned our calls or emails. The Milwaukee District Attorney's Office did, did confirm charges are likely not coming Thursday. Robinson's mother told us charges are filed. She plans to speak with us. So that was up into the 11th. Now, uh i believe this article is from trying to find the latest article we have an article here from the 
this is from the 12th and where the gentleman well, gentleman where this demon this monster was charged it says while suspect charged in Shade robinson case officials say search investigation continues Law enforcement officers aren't done investigating Sade Carlina Robinson's death and Maxwell S. Anderson's alleged involvement in it, they said at a press conference Friday morning. At about the same time Anderson was in Milwaukee County Circuit Court, charged with killing and dismembering 19-year-old Robinson, missing since April 1st. At the joint news conference, Milwaukee County Sheriff Danita Ball and Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman said a search for remains continues. An investigation into possible possible motive remains active, they said. Preliminary results of blood testing on, on a severed leg in Cudahy's Watermark Park suggested belonged to Robinson, according to the criminal complaint against Anderson. Other remains were found near 31st and Galena, not far from where Robinson's burn car was discovered. They have yet to be identified, Norman said. To know someone has been dismembered in a fashion like that, our investigation wants to find justice for the victim right now that's what we are focused on neither norman nor ball would comment on evidence found or taken from anderson's south side home during a search although the complaint said blood was found in bedding in anderson's home and on walls leading to a basement police said at this point there's no evidence of other victims so what we're gonna do we're gonna um we have another clip that we're going to play that um, gives more details on the case and more details about uh, Anderson. Answers and some closure in a gruesome murder mystery that's gripped the Milwaukee area for more than a week now. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jessa Breisbeck. And I'm Amanda Porterfield. This morning, Maxwell Anderson was charged with murdering and dismembering 19-year-old Sade Robinson. The charges link two stories we've been covering for more than a week. The missing woman, Robinson, and body parts discovered in several locations throughout the city and county. Prosecutors now say at least two of those body parts are Sade Robinson's, and officers are looking for more of them. We have team coverage for you tonight of this breaking news. CBS 58's Taj Mahal and Bryant McRae will have details on the investigation, but we start with Adam Reif live from Anderson's Southside home breaking down the new information tonight. Adam. And this home is where prosecutors say Maxwell Anderson killed Sade Robinson after the two went on a date last Monday. A few blocks away is where Anderson was taken into custody a few days later. In moments, you will see new video of that arrest in progress. Now, this case is bringing into light the story that has simmered in the shadows for days. While a concerned family was looking for a missing woman, body parts were turning up all across the city of Milwaukee. And now, we have more information on why. Sick son of a bitch. Hurt my baby. Sheena Scarborough did not hold back. Sick son of a bitch. Wanna pay. Her hatred for Maxwell Anderson was evident from the moment her daughter's alleged killer walked into the courtroom. Prosecutors say Anderson and Sade Robinson went out to two restaurants and bars the night of April 1st, then returned to Anderson's home on South 39th Street. They say at some point that night, Anderson killed Robinson, dismembered her body, then drove her car around while he scattered the body parts in various places. The allegations in the complaint are abhorrent. Um, it is the highest level of violence imaginable. Anderson also did Sade's car and lit it on fire. He spoke just once during Friday's hearing. Do you understand the maximum potential penalties? Yes, Your Honor. Anderson's attorney first tried to get the homicide charge thrown out. And there's nothing in here that says that she died at Mr. Anderson's home. Sade's mother again lashed out. So I'd ask you to dismiss that count before we address Sh Anderson's attorney then alluded to Anderson being innocent. Had Mr. Anderson been involved in this, this horrible tragedy, we would expect one to flee. But bail was ultimately set at $5 million. Sade's family had been searching for her ever since her disappearance. Authorities used phone records, surveillance video, and home security video to close in on Anderson. He was arrested Thursday, April 4th. Friday brought some answers for the family, but also more questions. What a do something like this to my beautiful baby. She hurt nobody. And little closure. 
Me and my family would never be okay. Imagine trying to bury your niece with nobody for the service. So that um that clip showed the um the initial court proceeding and um I, I, it's just it's just it's really heartbreaking it's really um and it's really disgusting I, i'm almost at a loss for words brothers and sisters i'm just be honest we get we gotta stop lying to our children we gotta stop lying to our children we gotta stop lying and saying that uh we live in this pro post racial world we have to um stop lying to them saying that you know love is love stop lying to them saying that you know you should love everybody and you should be friends with everybody we got to stop lying black people have to stop lying to their children stop lying to your children stop lying to your children about uh god loves everybody and god will save everybody and stop lying it's lies it's all lies people want to hurt black people because we exist there are predators predators out here who want to violate and mutilate women simply because that's in their dna monsters are real if you watch some of these shows like uh these old dateline shows and stuff like this these people do this stuff to their relatives and people who look like them what makes you what makes you think they won't do this type of horrific savage barbaric demonic uh uh, uh crime against you your family your, your children your loved ones predators like this are running around every day and like i said the fact and maybe she didn't tell anybody the fact that she was meeting with some and we don't know where they met probably online the fact that a 19 year old girl is meeting with some 33 year old loser who looked like he don't even have nothing and nobody questioned it and nobody said hey let me come with you or nobody nothing it's crazy to me and i'll be honest this is why fathers are needed because no, I know good and well, if her father was aware of this and in her life, he would look at her and be like, as ab absolutely not. And one of the reports I, I saw, did they they went to uh, a sports bar and this and that. And I, this girl's 19 years old. She's not old enough to drink. None of this should be happening. This This young girl should be alive. She shouldn't be interacting with this type of person and in for any reason whatsoever but because we refuse to, to teach our children the truth we refuse to teach them to protect themselves that we refuse to arm them with the knowledge that they need to defend their own life which sometimes for a woman defending your own life means not even being in a situation where anything like this can happen why are you going back to this person's house or why are you bringing this person to your house that you just met in person for a first date why are you even dating a person that's nearly twice your age why are you going to places where alcohol is being served when you're not old enough to serve alcohol why is any of this stuff happening we cannot afford to lose any more people we can't afford to put our young daughters in this situation to be uh, uh, abused and, and violated and mutilated by predators and savages and barbarians. I mean, this case is so heartbreaking because it's so senseless. This, this demon had no reason to harm this young girl other than the fact that he was a predator looking to go out and harm a young black girl and that's what he wanted to do and that's what he did and now she's no longer here and there's nothing we can do about it 
other than they say they're going to give they're going for uh life i don't know what the the laws are in milwaukee i don't know if they have uh the death penalty available in wisconsin but i'm just being honest man some of these heinous crimes that we're seeing somebody allowing this person to live and, and taxpayers paying uh you know paying for this person to eat meals and man, man what are we doing what are we doing this this type of crime is so heinous the person should receive the same that their, their justice should be whatever they did being done to them that's what the just that's real justice is and not only that i'm just beyond who's his family members what they got to say about this how long have they known that he was a sick demented individual i need answers because no one wakes up one day and think that they're going to do something this heinous this is this is insane so brothers and sisters um i'll be intermittently checking in on this case to see um how it proceeds see how it's adjudicated uh my heart goes out to the family of young Shade robinson um you can hear the pain in her mother's voice um her uncle's voice and uh, this is just so senseless and we just have to, like i said before we just have to tell our children the truth that we're behind enemy lines here and that there are people that hate us and there are people that would kill us just as soon as they would wake up and, and wash their face and brush their teeth and we can't be just running around at, as if that's not the case because it would be totally defenseless so with that brothers and sisters i thank you all for um listening i thank you all for watching uh don't forget to like share and subscribe this is your brother dc radical one and this has been the latest edition of the Radical Report. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, follow us on our other social media platforms. On Instagram, we're at dc.radical, the number one. On Twitter, we're at dc underscore radical underscore one. And the cash app is dollar sign dc radical one. Again, thank you for subscribing. A big for ODA.